Welcome to Community Mindfulness Projects, Mindfulness Care for the Resilient Caregiver. My name is Erica Long. I'm one of the founders of Community Mindfulness Project. We're a nonprofit whose mission is meditation for all who want it. We help people learn healthy habits to support their well being, specifically through meditation and mindfulness. Grace Farms Foundation has made this series possible with technical support. Please check out their website at gracefarms.org to learn all the ways they're advancing good in the world. It's such a privilege to offer this session to all of you who dedicate your days to safeguarding and improving the well being of others. We want to thank you for the vital work that you do. In this session, we're going to explore how to use our breath to ground us in the present moment and reset our overburdened nervous system. So let's talk about mindfulness of breathing. It's probably the most well-known and most studied mindfulness practice. In this session, we'll do two different versions. This first practice can be done anywhere, anytime, in a meeting, driving in the car, while you're on the phone, I try to do it whenever I wash my hands these days. It's called resonant breathing. And as we breathe in, we breathe in for a count of six and fully inflate our lungs. And then we breathe out for a count of eight, getting all of the air out of the body. As we do this, we pay close attention to what it feels like to breathe, almost as if we've never breathed before and we notice where we feel the breath in the body. So let's practice together, shall we? You can close your eyes if you like, but you don't need to. And we're going to breathe in for a long, slow count of six, filling our lungs. And then breathe out for a long, slow count of eight. And remembering as you breathe in, you may be noticing what it feels like to breathe deeply. And as you breathe out, maybe you're noticing where you feel the breath in the body. So continuing at your own pace for four more rounds. Just two more rounds. And now allowing the body to breathe at its own pace not needing to control it any longer or direct it. And when you're ready, opening your eyes if they've been closed. So why does deep breathing work? Many of us, when we were kids, were told to take three deep breaths when we were angry, upset, or frustrated but we weren't necessarily told why to do that. And it can be easier to remember to do something when you know why you're doing it. So in the practice we just did, we were directing the breath. We were using it to send a signal to the brain that everything is okay. So we as humans are built to withstand very short periods of acute stress. And then our nervous systems are supposed to return to baseline to a regulated state. There are times, however, when our circumstances or our overreactive brain sends our nervous system up into stress mode and it doesn't come back down to the baseline to the regulated state. And that's incredibly taxing on our system and draining on our health. So there's a nerve that runs up the spine into the base of the brain 
into the fear center of the brain. And when we take deep breaths, the diaphragm moves up and down the spine, massaging the vagus nerve. And that sends a signal to the brain that everything is okay. Extending the exhale longer than the inhale actually calms us down. Conversely, if you're ever feeling like you need a little boost of energy, you can make the inhale longer than the exhale. So now we'll switch gears to a practice where we let the breath flow at its own pace with no control over it, and we just observe it. So why do we do this? The traditional breathing practice, which is what we're about to do, where we just observe the breath, has all the benefits of any mindfulness practice where we place our attention on an anchor in the present moment and get us out of our heads. When we connect with the present moment, it's like the nervous system breathes a big sigh of relief. And the region of the brain that allows us to feel connected to the present moment is also the region of the brain that helps us to feel integrated with our environment, less self-focused. There's less of the I, me, and my type thinking, less ruminating, and we're less prone to looping thought when we've engaged that area of the brain. This observing the breath practice is also a great practice for letting go of our tendency to control things that we don't need to control. And that letting go can help us when we can't control certain things in life. So during this practice, we just let the breath flow on its own. It's our great counter to our tendency to try to control things in life when we don't need to. So how do we do it? We begin by placing all of our attention on what it feels like to breathe, as if it's the first time we've ever breathed. And while we're doing this practice, the mind will want to do all kinds of things. It will try to distract us. It'll tell us we're not doing it right. It'll sow seeds of doubt. And each time we realize that the mind is doing this, we can smile because that's the magic moment. That is the magic moment when we start to rewire our brain. It's the moment we begin to break habitual patterns of thought and reactivity and we start to exercise some choice on where we place our attention and how we spend our mental energy. After we smile at the magic moment, we gently but firmly guide our attention back to what it feels like just to breathe. So curiosity is a huge helper in this endeavor. We can wonder what the next breath will be like when we're not controlling it. We can wonder how close we can get to the pure experience of just breathing without the mind being involved. The other huge helper is a sense of humor. It can be really funny to see what the mind will do, what sorts of thoughts come up. It's much easier for us to maintain our practice and our poise in life when we don't take the chattering mind so seriously. And the last note before we get started if bringing attention to your breath really makes you feel uneasy, which it does for some people, that's perfectly okay. In that case, pick something else to place your attention on. You can listen to the sounds around you or sense into your feet on the floor. Feel free to experiment. So let's practice together. We'll start just by gathering our attention in the present moment. So just beginning to sense into your body in this present moment. So bringing a, attention down from the activity up in the mind, down into the body. You can close your eyes or look down towards your knees if you like. So 
So inviting you to check in and make sure that you're in a position that allows you to feel alert and relaxed at the same time. And also that you're sitting with a sense of dignity. Caring for ourselves is a worthy endeavor in and of itself, and it helps us stay strong as we care for others. So sensing into how you're sitting right now. And now bringing attention to what it feels like just to breathe. Letting the breath flow at its own natural rhythm. Experimenting with letting go of the need to control the breath. Maybe after an exhale, waiting to breathe in until the body asks for a breath. There's nothing for you to do, just be and breathe. And know that you are being and breathing. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Just bringing our bare attention to the sensation of breathing. As thoughts arise, remembering that this is perfectly normal and we can smile and we can let go of the thoughts, sort of like setting down a leaf to float away in a gentle stream. Coming back to noticing what it feels like in the body to breathe. Noticing what it's like to be a human being and not a human doing for a few moments. Just sitting here, observing the breath, being present for it, noticing where you feel it most in the body.
And if you've had even one easeful breath during this practice, you may want to consider silently offering that easeful breath as a symbolic gift to someone who may need it. You can almost picture it wrapped up in a bow in outstretched hands as you offer it to this person, extending a wish to them, may they breathe freely. May we all breathe easily. Allowing for that wish to arise from inside the body and not just from inside the mind if possible. Beginning to take in the sounds around you, widening your attention a little bit gradually. If your eyes have been closed, gently opening them and casting a soft gaze about your surroundings. So how do we bring this out into our engaged life? How do we use this practice throughout our day? A few resonant breathing rounds, those rounds of deep breathing that we did before in times of stress can be hugely helpful. Maybe doing five rounds of breathing in as you count to six and breathing out as you count to eight several times a day. In addition, paying full attention to just one breath now and then throughout the day can help us reground, connect us with the present moment, allowing the nervous system to relax a bit. We can also begin to cultivate a habit of noticing if we're actually breathing. How many times have we sort of come to the realization that, oh my God, I think I was just holding my breath. And then one of my colleagues taught me this expression that I adore. If we can breathe through it, we can live through it. And so when something particularly challenging is taking place, if we can just pay attention to breathing in, and breathing out as we move through that experience, we can have a much better sense of capability and resilience. All of this can be done throughout the day during transitions. It can be a nice reboot before you meet with someone. I think of it as a cleansing breath. If you can give your full attention to even just one breath every now and then throughout the day, you will feel a difference. So in closing, wishing you well, thanking you for the noble work that you do. We hope that this has served you somehow. Please feel free to reach out with any questions to welcome at communitymindfulnessproject.org. There's several breathing meditations at communitymindfulnessproject.org, as well as lots of other resources. Also, if you've listened to this, we'd love if you could shoot us a brief email Let us know what your caregiving role is and if this is serving you in some way and let us know if we can make it better. This can help us improve the way that we're serving you and the really important work that you're doing. So until the next installment, take good care of yourself.